there everybody. Welcome back to the site again. It's Rod here from Jetboard Australia. Uh, we've got another board we're going to work on today. This one's got some cooling problems. Uh, we did a little test on it there the other day and unfortunately it wasn't cooling correct. So uh, we're going to pull it apart, work out what's going wrong and um, get it sorted out for the customer and get going again. So uh, yeah, let's get stuck into it and uh, get this one going. Okay guys. We've just done a heap of work on this board, done the carburetor and the ICU and a whole bunch of stuff. So we just stuck on the hose so I can final tune the carburetor and check the cooling system. But what I have found is the, uh, the cooling system's blocked. Obviously it's full of salt water. The, uh, the telltale wasn't working. Uh, the cooling water wasn't coming through the exhaust or was just dribbling through, not enough to uh, keep that cool. So what I found was when I running it, the cylinder was getting very hot. So this is something I want to check. So first thing to do is obviously we've, uh, we've had the flusher fitted to the back of the board. <clears throat> we'll uh, start pulling these cooling tubes apart. So come in a little closer and um, we'll show you these tubes and how it'll work. So basically this blue line here is your cooling line into the board. <clears throat> what I'm gonna do, it's got the same sort of clip that's on the fuel tank. I'm just gonna pull that back and pull it off. So that's your main cooling line. And then there's a the cooling line to the exhaust, which is there. And obviously from there, the cooling water comes through this tube into the cylinder, a portion of it split off into the exhaust, and then the rest runs through the cylinder, through the cylinder head, and out through the telltale with the tube you can see in there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the water on and get a bit of an idea of how blocked up this is. So, okay, so I've just propped the cooling line up there so I can see what's going on. I'm just gonna quickly turn the hose on. And we'll see what happens. Oh yeah, plenty of water coming out through there tube there, so let's pull that one off and see if I can block that. Oh yeah, that's not too bad. So that side of it, I think it's okay. Okay, so we brought the board back into the workshop. We're gonna try and clear out the exhaust tube and also the little telltale there. So we'll start off with the exhaust tube. So uh, two millimeter driller, two millimeter drill. And we'll put that down in through there. Oh yeah, and you can feel, feel it's blocked up full of muck in there. Crap in it there, so I'm just going to run that through. Yeah, it's about the right depth. So that will certainly clear out anything in there. So that side of it's fine. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the tube back on to the cylinder so we know it's coming from the, the back end. And I'll put the tube back on the exhaust so that could, should they get that end sorted. And I've also pulled this tube off here for the telltale, and I see it's very corroded there. So what we're going to do, we'll go and pull this elbow off and see what it's like in that elbow and see how it's blocked up. Um, uh, very unlikely it's blocked up in the telltale. Uh, it'll be blocked in the cylinder head here too. So I'll pull it off and we'll show you what that's all about in a sec. Okay, so we've cleaned that side and we've got the tube off here uh, to the telltale. We're going to run a drill through there as well. And that, uh, from what I feel, it's full of salt as well, which is nasty yeah, that it is there. Look at all that salt. That's it's all bad. So hopefully we can clear it. Um, it is pretty chock-a-block. If it's really bad, we'll have to pull the motor out, pull the cylinder head off, and then uh, try and clear it that way. But um, you never know. We might get lucky here. I'm not overly confident. Yeah, heaps in there. Look at that. It's mad. You'll probably find though it's in there and it's down into the cylinder head too, but we'll clean this and we'll see how we go. Okay, so I've uh, pulled this engine out of that board. Obviously, this fitting was really badly blocked and I've tried to undo it and it's really stuck. So there's going to be some nasty corrosion under here. So, uh, yeah, that's not going anywhere. So I'm going to pull the cylinder head. So I've got it half undone here. We'll quickly whip it off and see what we end up with in here. Sure, it's going to be nasty under here. I do notice too the side of the, the cylinder is starting to lift there as well, which means it's been pushed from behind by the corrosion. So uh, I don't know what we're going to find in here. It's not going to be not going to be pleasant. So anyway, sure. All right, we'll give this a bit of a tap and see what we end up with. All right, let's see. There we go. What have we got? Yeah, that's not all bad. See the O-ring has popped through and see the corrosion build up around that O-ring. Yeah, it's popped through there. I might be able to save that. 
All right, the uh, cylinder that's not too bad, not too badly corroded. Not a lot of carbon on there too, so this board hasn't had a lot of use. Um, and then we'll look at the cylinder head, and I think you'll find yeah, through that fitting there is really badly blocked up. There's a bit of bit of corrosion build up there, but not too bad. But what we need to do is get that fitting out. So I think what we're going to need to do with that is get some heat into it and try and clear that out. So anyway, we'll uh, we'll attack that next. Okay, we've got that cylinder head off, and we've had a little uh, dig around the um, the cylinder here, and unfortunately, uh, the cylinder has broken away at the top there. So the O-ring, which would normally sit in that place there, which I'll grab it here. You can see if it sat in there, it would it would squash out the side, and unfortunately, down in the bottom end here, and you can see where the O-ring has has already started to do that. It's broken away at the bottom here as well and the o-ring sits in will sit and will not seal in there so unfortunately that cylinder's history so we're going to whip that off um show you how that's done and uh we're gonna to have to replace that cylinder which uh is just really unfortunate but anyway uh, what do you do this is obviously uh, a ski that hasn't been flushed correctly um and uh if this would has been flushed after salt water every use and maybe some salt away or something like that, uh, it would be fine. But unfortunately, it's been uh, sat with salt water in it. You can see the, you can see the salt build up there. You know, that's all salt, and uh, yeah, it's ruined that cylinder, unfortunately. Uh, but anyway, we'll replace it and get it back on the water. Okay, we'll get this cylinder off. Um, just a 10 mil uh, open ender. And I've uh, made up a special tool where I've actually ground down a 10 mil ring spanner, uh, which is nice and thin walls so that fits in there nicely. So we'll undo those. And this end, I'm gonna have to use the open end up. Undo that fella. So on this side, and back here. Send a little wriggle, and obviously get all the nuts off. And there we go. So the cylinder, um, other than the corrosion in the top, is in lovely condition, and there's some nasty corrosion you'll see down inside that cylinder. So again, it just hasn't been flushed properly. Uh, the things we look at when we're we're in here, we look at the crankshaft. So the crankshaft is is in lovely condition. It's in good nick. Um, the piston, it's in not bad condition as well. It's not too scored up and marked around, which is good. And then we can pop the, the piston ring off. And we can inspect that. This hasn't had a lot of use. So we can put the ring down in the cylinder. And we can check the ring end gap in there. And uh, we'll, we'll put a piston or ring in this anyway, because uh, it'll have a new cylinder. But give you an idea. The rest of that's in quite good condition. So anyway, um, we'll have to get another cylinder for that and uh, we'll put it back together later on. Okay guys, we've uh, we've put that engine back together and obviously put it back in the board. We put a new cylinder on it, a new piston of rings. Um, put all the cooling system back together and gave it a good run and it's working fine now. So that's, uh, that's a good outcome. Uh, Unfortunately though, if the customer had spent a little bit more time flushing the board, um, it would have been a lot better off. Um, we, we suggest to flush your board every time you use it in salt water. And you know, there's products like Salt Away and Salty Captain and things like that you can use. Uh, and what that does is lays a film inside those water jackets that you saw in the video, and it actually abs uh, absorbs or dissolves all those crusty, salty uh, buildups in cylinders and cylinder heads and that sort of stuff. So that's a really good product. But bottom line is if you don't flush your board properly, it's gonna cost you money. So uh, anyway, thanks, uh, thanks for watching again, guys. And uh, listen, please subscribe to my site and uh, I'll put some more videos like this together. See you again soon.